नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल दिस इज नॉट अ थ्रेट बट अ वार्निंग दिस वॉज अ चीफ मिनिस्टर्स स्टेटमेंट अगेंस्ट द फेडरल गवर्नमेंट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट दिस वरीज मी एंड दिस शुड वरी ऑल ऑफ अस लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वाई लेट्स गेट राइट इन टू दिस शो okay so predominantly uh every sorry not every but most of the central agencies are created made for the benefit of the people in general it is made and created for the security of the state security of the nation and like i told you security of the citizens so it is made with very good intention now what really happens is when this intelligence agencies when this enforcement agencies especially enforcement agencies i am not talking about intelligence agencies i am talking about enforcement agencies when this enforcement agencies gets political masters who mutate them who change them then this enforcement agency gets changed from what it is supposed to do that is protects the protect the rights of the citizen to what it does which is protecting the interest of the politician this metamorphosis happens and this metamorphosis happens over years of abuse it is not one year two years years of abuse of these agencies these metamorphoses happen and somewhere down the line by the looks of it even in india we are seeing this metamorphosis what a cbi was set up for what an ed was set up for and what a cbi is doing today and what an ed is doing today now let's start with central bureau of investigation you see central bureau of investigation is under the delhi special police establishment act 1946 it is called sp i guess sp in short now sp was primarily there to go and check the corruption of central government officers central government employees so they were made predominantly to protect the citizens from corruption done by the central government of employees theek hai na now in 1963 sp was turned into central into cbi i will tell you why in 1963 sp was authorized to investigate offenses under 91 different sections of the indian penal code and 16 other central acts besides offenses under the prevention of corruption act 1947 they were given more rights their jurisdiction spread more they were given 91 different acts to investigate over and above the corruption which i just told you and they were called the central bureau of investigation till then it's all fine it's all fine because they were given more powers they were given more uh, 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 responsibilities so that they they were seen as a very effective and efficient uh, group of people uh, that the, the the excise that happened since 1950 1946 that is the sp it proved to be a very potent force so they said why not use them for more things good that's how it should be it happened and as things progressed as things progressed political interference into central bureau of investigation started increasing when political interference on central bureau of uh, investigation started increasing one could see that even their investigation had different colors some were white some were black some were gray they had different colors different shades cbi didn't have the same reputation that it used to have and mind you i again say it is not 5 years 10 years 15 years 5 years 10 years 15 years it has changed drastically that's a different issue but it it changed it changed gradually now um, interestingly let me tell you about how cbi uh, head is uh, appointed to ensure that you know there is it is it is not politically driven or it is not there are no political pressures the head of cbi 
is appointed by the Chief Justice of India, the Leader of the Opposition and the Prime Minister of India. Three people come together and appoint CBI head. Idea kya tha? Idea ye tha ke bhai, now opposition bhi hai, Chief Justice bhi hai, Prime Minister bhi hai. So it can't be one party, can it? So he can be, he has to be a consensus of three uh, 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 people, three different uh, parts, three different sides of the coin. Two sides here, but the third side here, the chief, the judiciary. You know, so everything is fine. But is, did it happen? It didn't. It didn't. It didn't happen. Are we sitting down, putting up a panel and trying to investigate why is it not happening? Is there a panel sitting down and saying that why are we... Even now, why are people doubting the Central Bureau of Investigation? Why are people uh, raising doubts on Central Bureau of Investigation? I didn't say it. Even the Chief Justice of India said it. Why are people raising doubts? Why is the reputation of CBI not what it was? Is there a panel? No. Which means that the political masters wants it to happen that way. But they should do my work. So that's CBI. Now let's go to ED. Let's come to ED. ED, 1973, when FERA was uh, withdrawn, repealed, they launched FEMA in 1999. FEMA is uh, Foreign Exchange Management Act. FEMA, 1999, which was put into action 1st June 2000. Also, there was another act called the Prevention of Money Laundering Act in tune with the International Anti-Money Laundering Regime. This act was put into action in 2002. It was called PMLA. Now, to look after these two acts, a specialized body called ED, Enforcement Directorate. Enforcement Directorate was supposed to look into these two, Fiscal, Money Laundering and whatever, Foreign Exchange Management Act. Very good. Because at that point in time, we had a lot of black money, we a lot of people were laundering money. So, these, this body was bought in and this body was supposed to do their job. It was a specialized body. We would have got, we would have saved a lot of money that is being laundered. We would have saved a lot of black money that is going out of the economy. We could have saved all that. And that is what this body was bought over. Thought was perfect. But what this body became now is a different story. Why again political interference? Now, how does a ED director gets appointed? Now, ED director doesn't get appointed with these three panels and all that. ED, get, uh, ED director is appointed as per the provision of the Central Vigilance Commission Act 2003. The central appoints the director on recommendation of a committee with the Central Vigilance Commissioner as the chairperson. This primarily, the, the center can decide who becomes the ED director. When the center decides who is the ED director, when a prime minister and a, and a few people can decide who is the ED director, that ED director has to do what the prime minister says. So the point is, enforcement bodies started mutating into bodies other than protecting the people of the country, started protecting the politicians and the political party in power. This change hai. Like I repeat, I repeat again, it is not something that happened in 5 years or 10 years. This has been happening gradually. This has been happening gradually since 1960s. It has been happening gradually since 1960s. Before 1960s, it was not that bad. After 1960s, the grade started increasing, 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 increasing. And like I told you, last 10 years has been at its peak. Now, <clears throat> let me draw your attention to another body. There was another body called Gestapo. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to talk about Gestapo. Gestapo, when it was originally made, no, it was originally made, it was made as a secret police to uh, guard the people uh, of Germany. It was made as a secret police and it was made in 1933 and it was in existence till 1945. This secret police became the police for the Nazis. So this uniformed authorized men at arms would even kill for Nazis. But the fact is they were an enforcement body and look at what they mutated to. Of course, under Hitler, it happened in whatever, seven years and they were only existing for uh, whatever, uh, 13 years. In 13 years, it became a uniformed authorized body that could kill. Same thing, research, uh, state research bureau under uh, Idi Amin. It was supposed to be an intelligence and security agency of Uganda. Established in 1971 and was there till 1979 under uh, Idi Amin. 
it was supposed to look at internal security and and intelligence and what did it turn to it turned into a killing machine it turned into a killing machine why for whom for the political master so a state enforcement body that turned into mutated into a killing machine for a political head a state uh, in body here in gestapo which turned into a, a killing machine a, a, a political a political whatever muscle or whatever you call it muscle power to ensure that the dissent is controlled people are controlled for the nazis this is how enforcement agencies had has been mutated in the past i am not saying therefore the cbi is come to this level or ed is come to this level or i am not even saying that our government is uh, is like the nazis or like the like ed i mean i am not saying all of that that will be exaggeration and i will not uh, exaggerate but i am saying listen these are lessons we can learn from what happened outside these are lessons we can learn from what happened outside now let me come to my topic in hand which is what is worrying me you see um, N.K. Stalin made a statement where he said, "Turn back the pages of history to know the kind of agitation done by D.M.K. Else, ask the senior leaders in Delhi. Don't provoke. If you provoke the D.M.K. or the D.M.K. workers, you will not be able to bear the consequences. We also know all types of politics. This is not a threat, but a warning. As an Indian, I'm I'm worried." and i think every indian should be worried because this coming from a chief minister of a state addressed to the leaders at the center this is not a good thing this is a this is a red flag a huge red flag we are a federal system our central government or union government and state government should work seamlessly people in general should not even understand the difference between the central government and the state government and the policies and their problems they should not even understand it should be like one government that governs this entire country that is how it has been till uh, till recently all this is now worrying because every state seems to be kind of getting more aggressive than the earlier before this we saw arvind kejriwal before this we saw arvind kejriwal before him we saw uh, uh, mamata banerji we saw a lot of activity in maharashtra maharashtra took it without much of agitation mamata banerji was was much more agitated than what maharashtra was arvind kejriwal was more agitated than mamata banerji and now this tamil nadu the level of agitation the level of pushing back is becoming more and more between the state and the center that's what's worrying me and that should worry the state that should also worry the center that should worry every every indian this is not how governance should be for god's sake this is not how governance should be i mean central agencies central agencies cbi needs uh, consent if they have to operate in a particular state or some state gives them consent uh, you know to come and operate if they if they feel the need now that list of states not giving cbi consent is growing it is including tamil nadu which has stopped them from uh, give uh, operating in their state without consent it has become nine i mean you are stopping your own intelligence you are stopping your own enforcement agencies my apologies you are stopping your own enforcement agencies to come and investigate crime that's the trust mistrust between the state and the center i can't completely blame we can't completely blame the state definitely we can't the point that i'm trying to make through this editorial is that this is a warning sign this is a red flag let's keep politics aside for some time let's try and sit together let's try and mend ways politics hota rahega but if this is the kind of animosity between a state head and a and a central leadership we have a problem in hand and that's something that the central leadership and the state should realize this is a very serious and a dangerous situation for our country and that's what i wanted to get to your notice till i see you next time that's tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock namaskar